Hello, Buns! Welcome back to Cinnabun Sundays, a weekly video series where we talk about all things bunny. I'm Morgan, Cinnabun's Bun Mom, and today we are kicking off a brand new series on this channel all about how to get a bunny. So for the entire month of May, every single weekend, I am going to be going through each phase of the process of getting a bunny, bringing it home, deciding if it's right for you, how to get it all set up, all of the things. So if you are a new bunny owner or are looking to become a new bunny owner, this is the series for you and we are on episode one. So buckle up, get started. Let's, let's, let's get a bunny. So let's just get started with the big question. Should you adopt a bunny or should you go through a breeder? Now this is actually an extremely like very heavy question. There are a lot of different opinions out there. There's a lot of different reasons to do one versus the other. And today I'm just going to kind of give you, provide you with some information from both directions and allow you to make a decision from there on what's going to work best for you. I want to start off with adopting because in my personal opinion, I think that the best thing you can do for bunnies is adopt them. So if you've heard the expression um, mating like a rabbit, that pretty much means that bunnies have a lot of babies. They have a ton of babies and unfortunately bunnies are such misunderstood animals. So they're having all of these babies. These babies are getting taken in, they're being adopted and then they're getting abandoned. Rabbits are one of the most abandoned pets out there just because there really is not enough information out there on how to take care of them properly. So we have this issue of a ton of baby bunnies being born, but then we have this problem of a ton of bunnies being abandoned, which just leads to a ton of rabbits who need homes, which is why adopting a bunny is one of the best things you can do for the rabbit community. So just on that level, there are so many bunnies that need homes, which means that there are a lot of bunnies for you to choose from. Now, one of the simplest ways to adopt a rabbit is truly just um, kind of by accident. There are so many bunny owners who have two bunnies who they think they're both girls, think they're both boys, and then they hit puberty and whoops, baby bunnies. And this can happen all the time. So sometimes that can just be through Instagram. You find out that a bunny is giving birth and you can reach out to people that way. You can literally just go on Craigslist and search for like bunnies in need of homes, bunnies up for adoption. So right there, that's a super easy way to get a bunny, but it's not necessarily a formal way to do it. But I wanted to throw that out there because I actually know of quite a few of our pals who have gotten bunnies that way. So it's, some, it's just something to mention. A more formal adoption process would be by going through your your local animal adoption agency. There are rabbit adoption centers, but there's also just adoption centers that have rabbits. And you can find your local rabbit shelter by simply just Googling rabbit adoption near me on Google, and you are going to have a ton of luck there. I'm also gonna link some resources in the description below about how to find adoption centers near you and the best way to go that way. So if you're interested in adopting and don't really know where to start, just check out the links in our description. And now it's time to move into a little bit more of a controversial topic, which are breeders. So I would be lying if I said I was against bunny breeding as a whole, because to be completely honest with you, I got Cinnabon from a breeder. I got her from a Holland Lop breeder. There is a huge difference between ethical breeding and unethical breeding. And I'm going to share how to know the difference because I actively believe there should be no support given to any of the unethical breeders out there. And there are far too many of them. Let's talk about like actually what makes a good bunny breeder. In my opinion, a good bunny breeder is a bunny breeder that is supporting proper rabbit welfare. And proper rabbit welfare, as we know, is understanding a rabbit's diet, which is 80% hay, 15% greens, and then 5% like treats and dry food. They understand that bunnies need an appropriate amount of water, so they're not using water bottles, they're using water bowls. And most importantly, a good breeder knows that proper rabbit care means that that bunny is not living in a cage. So while you are researching breeders, it is so important that you talk to the breeder and you get an understanding for their philosophy on rabbit care. So for an example, in my experience, when I was getting Cinnabon, the breeder I talked to, she had an entire document that was like 10 pages long of proper rabbit care, what you need to do with your rabbit. I even had to sign a form saying that I agreed that this is how bunnies should be raised and that I agreed to raise them this way in order for me to get the rabbit. So she's making sure that any bunny that she is giving away or that she is selling is going to a good home that's going to be raised 
properly. Things to stay away from is if you were to tour a facility and they have a ton of wire cages, you can tell that the bunnies do not have the appropriate amount of food. All the bunnies are squished together in cages together and you can tell that this is not the life that you wanna be giving your rabbit, then that is not something you wanna be supporting, right? There are bunny breeders out there that truly do believe that there are proper ways to raise your rabbit and they really wanna push that those are the people you should be supporting and giving your money to. Do not feed into an industry that is shoving rabbits in wire cages, that's not giving them the diet that they need, and who are just trying to like get as many bunnies out there and then don't give a really about where their bunnies end up. One resource you can check out is the American Rabbit Breeder Association, which is really just a place where registered rabbit breeders are listed in an index. This does not mean that they are all ethical breeders. Just because they're on this website doesn't mean you should be supporting them. However, this is going to give you a good guide of like, okay, here are the breeders in your area. And from there, you can go down the list and start to do your research, email people, make some calls, visit the area and see, okay, do they check these boxes? Now, before we lead into like the pros and cons section, I just want to shout out a few things that you absolutely should not do when you are searching for a bunny. Do not buy a rabbit from a pet store. That is an industry that needs to stop. If you are going to be giving your money anywhere, give your money to an adoption agency. Give your money to breeders who are really doing it right and really trying to emphasize good bunny cares. Do not give your money to a pet store. They are not taking care of their rabbits. They are in tiny little cages when they're there. And also just a lot of the things you can purchase at big chain pet stores aren't even the proper things for rabbits. So removing rabbits from a pet store industry and really bringing it into a more curated place is a huge point that I want to drive home. So now that you have the information of how to find a rabbit and how to get it, which option is best for you? We have the pros of adoption, which are the ethical pro. This is the number one most ethical thing that you can be doing. Number two, it's cheaper. Most adoption agencies, you can definitely get your bunny for under $100. It's probably gonna be somewhere between 25 and 50 bucks. If you go through a friend or Craigslist, you could get a free bunny. So cost efficient, heck yes. Another pro is that oftentimes your bunny is fixed once you adopt them. Most adoption places will fix the rabbit once they are in the adoption agency. Not having to go through a spay or neuter surgery is huge. Not only does that save you a big chunk of change down the line, but it is just stressful. It is not a fun experience. I absolutely recommend getting it done, but it is not a fun thing to do. So if you can avoid that by having a bunny that is already spayed and neutered, that is gonna save you just a ton of stress down the line. Another pro is that by getting connected to your local rabbit shelter, you can actually start to find that rabbit community really easily. By plugging into a rabbit center, you can learn more people who go there. You can learn more about rabbit care just by talking to the officials who are working there. And it's just a nice way to like kind of join in in that rabbit community in your local area. So now let's talk about a few cons with adopting. One is you're gonna have to be a little bit more patient. You still wanna be specific about what kind of bunny is right for you. And so if you have an idea of the kind of pet you wanna bring into your house, you're gonna have to kind of be waiting for that right bunny to come your way. So instead of going through a breeder where it's more like, I don't know, more like a consumer thing, which is upsetting to be honest, there's just more patience involved in getting that bunny. Another con, which I personally don't think is a con, but I know it is for some, most likely you're not gonna be getting a baby bunny. Now, sometimes you will if you're getting one from Craigslist or a friend and you're taking that right away. But if you go through an adoption center, usually they're full grown when you get an adopted bunny. And remember, that's not all bad. Yes, baby bunnies are so cute and it's so special raising your bunny from like their baby cuteness to like full grown adulthood life. I can't speak, but you know what I mean. But being able to miss out on like the baby bunny hormone period, again, getting your bunny spayed and neutered, just the phase they go through where they decide they wanna chew on every single thing in your house. Um, it's nice skipping that to be honest, but I will say I know a lot of people love baby bunnies and that's something important to them. So I'm putting it in the con pile, but it has like an asterisk. And one more thing worth noting in the con section is you don't necessarily know where the bunny's coming from. So you don't know if the parent bunnies have like a history of health issues. You don't necessarily know all of the genetic makeup of your bunny, which isn't super important like for the bunny itself, but just knowing like, is there anything I should look out for? Has like there been cancer in its family? Are there things that it could be more genetically predisposed to? So that's the information there about adopting bunnies. The pros totally outweigh the cons in my opinion, but it's important to lay it out. So now let's hop into the pros and cons 
of breeders. And when I say breeders, I mean an ethical breeder. So if you're going through an ethical breeder, I think that the number one pro there is you have that support from the get-go. A really good breeder will stay with you after you adopt the bunny. That is somebody that you can reach out to and ask questions about. That is someone where if you adopt this bunny and maybe you realize you might've made a mistake and they're not meant for you, you can return the bunny to that breeder and not abandon it elsewhere. So having that support I think is a huge plus. Another pro of going through an ethical breeder is being able to plan a little bit more. If you know exactly when that bunny was born and exactly when it's gonna be ready, that gives you time to really prep your space, bunny proof appropriately, have everything you need ready so that on the day that you're expected to pick it up, you can do that. A third pro to going through an ethical breeder is, I mean, Baby bunnies, again, although they have the cons of chewing everything up, I think that mine and Cinnabon's bond is so strong because I have raised her since she was eight weeks old. She was a teeny tiny baby and watching her grow up and learning and doing that together has been a really special experience. And the last pro that I think is just worth mentioning is again, what I keep saying about understanding like the health history of the bunny's family and understanding what they could be predisposed to and knowing like the length of the life of the other bunnies in this family and just having that peace of mind. I don't think that that should be a deal breaker. It's just worth putting in the pro column. The number one con of breeders is that you're putting money into an industry that really doesn't need to exist. There are so many bunnies having babies and so many bunnies that are just abandoned that really this industry isn't super necessary. There are enough bunnies that need homes that breeding industries aren't something that's necessary to keep the bunny population going. However, if you're doing it through a good breeder, there is a lot of good that comes from that and breeding bunnies that are healthy and not unethically bred, which I think is important, but all in all, there are bunnies that need homes and are going to continue to need homes elsewhere. Another con to breeding is money. Oh my goodness. Like I was saying, you can adopt a bunny for like 25, 50 bucks. If you go through a breeder, you're probably looking at upwards of $300. Depending on the breeder, it could be less, but a lot of times getting that purebred bunny, it can be pricey. Another con of going through a breeder is sometimes the ethical breeders aren't as close to you as an adoption agency. I would say there are so many rabbit breeders out there, but the ones who are really doing it right it's a much smaller number. So you might actually have to travel farther to get a bunny from a really solid breeder when you could just go to your local animal shelter and pick one up yourself. Bunnies do not love travel. They don't like a lot of change. And especially when they are a brand new baby, that is a lot for them. So having to put them through that kind of travel can be pretty scary. But that's not to say that there isn't an ethical breeder right around the corner from you. It kind of just depends on your location. But again, do that research. Okay, buns, that is it. Those are my tips for how to get a bunny. I do want to say though, that no matter what, if you have a bunny now and you got them from one of the ways I said not to do it, it doesn't matter. You have a bunny. The most important thing about bunny care isn't necessarily where they come from, but where you take them and the way that you raise them. So despite the way that you got your bunny, if you did it in a way that I necessarily didn't recommend, what you can do now is raise that bunny properly and give it a home that it really needs and deserves. I hope you're having a lovely Sunday and we will see you next week. Bye buns. <laughs>